All right, back with another one. We got the Skeleton Skin SCP-3114. Wouldn't it be chilly? Um, this thumbnail right here is crazy. I don't even, hanging by the shoulders is wild. Um, but we got the boy, the rubber, the man, the myth, the legend. You know what I'm saying? I love the rubber. You know, Dr. Bob, the rubber, the two goats. Um, but we finna get straight into this video and see what it's talking about. I'm gonna see y'all there. She wanna know where I be. She wanna know, yeah. Walking that bitch, cause I know I love my sleep. Walking with slime, yeah. That nigga man, cause she wanna leave with me. Show that she mine, yeah. I let her brag. I be fucking this bitch. Show her mine, yeah. Dicky ventured into the woods as he was a participant in a game of truth or dare with his hiker buddies. He opted for a dare and they dared him to go into the woods and bring back something scary, like a werewolf or ghosts, they added sarcastically. And Dicky had always yearned for a chance to show off his bravado, mostly to impress Jenny, one of the hikers. The woods got denser as Dicky ventured deeper. His flashlight, although bright, eliminated nothing ahead of him. And sure enough, he tripped. He felt something was grabbing his ankle. Oh, no, nah, you bugging, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You're gonna get stomped out, bro. What is that? Ankle. He immediately grabbed the light, and chills ran down his spine as the flashlight shone on a set of bones, bony white human hands poking out of the ground. Horrified, he scrambled himself up and tried to run away, but then an idea struck him. I didn't bump into the skeleton for nothing. <laughs> I'll take it back as proof of my bravery and you prove crazy. them wrong. Crazy. And with that, he started to dig. The bones were being revealed more and more as he dug. Soon, the skeleton was fully dug out. It was intact, and none of the bones were disintegrated. Without any delay, Dickie grabbed both hands of the skeleton and carried it on his back. No, that's After crazy. walking a few oh, steps, look at the eyes. he felt Ooh. hands of the skeleton and carried it on his back. After walking a few steps, he felt something grabbing oh, no. his throat. And just when he tried to understand what was going on, it was too late. The skeleton that he had picked- don't got no strength, man. It's a bone. I'm slap- I'm, I'm literally snapping his wrist in half, bro. You overthinking it, bro. That's bones. You crazy. I know bones, but it's, it's very old bones. I should be able to- Crack that. Piggy backed was not dead. You better pile he tried to free him. himself from its strong clutches, but he couldn't. Back up into the a tree. The skeleton's strength was stronger than that of Dickie's, and its squeeze on his throat was getting tighter by the seconds. Eventually, Dickie ceased to struggle and suffocated to his death. Damn. He fell lifelessly, and the skeleton began to tear an opening on his body. It pulled out the bones, then squeezed itself into Dickie's skin and flesh. Back at the campsite, Dickie's buddies were chatting gleefully around the campfire. They saw the return of Dickie, and one of the hikers, Ripley, rose up. Took you long enough, huh? I see you didn't bring anything back with you. But Dickie, or what he was now, only stared at them blankly. Hello everybody, I'm the Rubber. Today, we bring you a SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-3114. SCP-3114, also known as Wouldn't It Be Chilly, is an animate human skeleton. Although it has no articulation or connective tissue, its individual bones remain intact as they would in a human body. Research showed that individual bones can be pulled out of position, but quickly return to their correct position when there is no longer an external force acting on them. Though it is made of similar minerals as human it. bone, it is stronger and requires more than three times as much force to break, and the anomalous feature extends to the broken bone mending on its own. Regarding its ability to move, there is no current explanation. However, the observed range of motion in its joints is similar to a healthy adult female's. It is much stronger than a human and can lift at least oh, 200 never mind. You got kilograms it. with one shit. arm alone. Its maximum observed foot speed is 60 kilometers an hour. I ain't know how much that is. 3114. Here we go. Hey Siri. What's 60 kilometers an hour? 60 kilometers per hour is 37.28 miles per hour. That's crazy. He like me for real. Or has an apparent field of view similar to a human's and reacts to visual stimuli. It also responds to touch. However, it does not react to sound or smell. After recovering 3114, it has proven to be extremely aggressive and would immediately attempt to attack any time it sees a human or other biological humanoid entities. When it sees a potential target, 3114 will approach the target with the quickest route it can. 
be avoiding obstacles it cannot push through. Once it reaches the target, it will latch on with its hands around the throat and begin squeezing it, Yikes, asphyxiating bro. the target. Yeah. Once the target stops moving, it will begin to tear the body open grotesquely and pull out its bones over the course of several right, hours. Bro. Once the whole skeleton is removed, it will attempt to pull the remaining flesh over itself. Once the body is no longer in one large piece, it loses interest in it. A series of conducted experiments showed varied results of 3114's reaction to different entities. For the first two experiments, the results came out the same. Both the D-Class personnel and a female gorilla were placed in the vicinity of 3114. Both subjects tried to escape, and even though the gorilla was able to break 3114's left ulna, none of them survived and was asphyxiated. Oh my God. Their flesh was Ugh. torn open and bones removed. However, upon discovering that the victim's body was not intact, 3114 placed the subject remains in a corner along with several sticks and a cardboard box on top of the subject, as though burying him. 3114 seemed quite compassionate and considerate to the other two subjects, though like one was a me. border collie and the other was a human skeleton model. For the dog, 3114 approached and examined the subject cautiously with its fingers and was surprised when the dog licked it. Yeah, it played with the dog for two hours and was visibly excited in its presence. It wrestled with the dog without harming it and threw sticks for it. The subject was then removed from the enclosure without incident. 3114 stood at the exit for several hours after the subject's removal and struck the walls repeatedly, as if 3114 was missing its presence. Tack. Instead, it examined the subject by prodding it. When this elicited no response, it ran its hand along the top of the subject's Freak head. Young boy. Since the subject was a skeleton itself and no skin was there yeah, to tear, freak, it carried uh... it back to its enclosure and cradled it for several hours. <laughs> oh. It then put the subject <laughs> in the same position it takes during sleep periods. A different approach was made by 3114 when a male human cadaver one hour after death was placed in the enclosure. 3114 proceeded with its process and was able to keep the body intact while it placed itself inside. It walked around its enclosure for an hour while wearing the subject. The only exception in this experiment was another D-Class personnel that was placed in the enclosure. When 3114 approached, he attempted to escape. 3114 grabbed him, but only gently. It continued to try interacting with him, taking his hand and placing it on its face trying to mimic his movements and embracing him. After three hours, the D-Class was removed safely from the enclosure. Lastly, when no target is present, 3114 is fairly docile. It explores its enclosure but does not attempt to escape. When the lights are turned out for the night, it lays down and becomes motionless. Though it resembles sleep, it is still capable of responding to visual stimuli. As for its motives for wearing the skins of its victims, researchers think of it as a way of coping with certain longings. When Dicky, or rather 3114 in Dicky's skin, moved closer to the group, the group leader Tom noticed something was off in Dicky's demeanors. His movements were stiff, his mouth agape, and what happened to his eyes? But he brushed it off as him being tired from his little adventure in the woods. It ignored Ripley and walked past him to settle down around the campfire, next to Jenny. She asked if he had brought anything scary back to show them, but she got no response in return. This is 3114 only stared blankly into the fire. They continued their merriments around the fire, but as time went on, they noticed the atmosphere was off. Dicky, the usual chatterbox in the group, had remained silent ever since his return from the woods. Tom whispered to Dicky, Hey man, you all right? You're awfully quiet. What the? He found a gruesome tear in the nape of Dickie's skin. It appeared that it ran all the way down. He pulled Ripley aside and whispered, Hey, something's not right with Dickie. Yeah, I figured he's so damn quiet ever since he came back. What's wrong with him? They both looked at their friend, who was just sitting and staring into the fire. Jenny was starting to feel uneasy. There's a scar or something behind his neck. Think we should ask him? Without saying anything, Ripley quickly moved behind it and pulled up Dickie's shirt, revealing a tear that ran from the neck to crazy. waist. A white set of skeleton could be seen within Dickie's pink flesh. 
It was bared for <gasps> everyone around to see. This, this isn't Dicky. 3114 stood up abruptly, and it tore Dicky's skin further. Uh... It got loose and fell off 3114, revealing a skeleton figure stained in Dicky's blood. Horrified, the hikers ran, but unfortunately for Jenny, she tripped and twisted her ankle. Are you serious? She sold. Moved towards her. She sold. She screamed for help, but her friends did not come back. I'm sorry, but real niggas, because I'm not coming back either. What do you want me to do? Carry on the back? Meanwhile, that nigga can run 37.74 miles per hour? Because 3114 proceeded to repeat what it did to Dickie on Jenny. Hours later, 3114, now in Jenny's skin, sat around the campfire, basking in its warmth in the companies of Jenny's skeleton. Many researchers observed 3114's attempt to wear the skin of its victim as a way to cope with the longing of skin, and company that had been undergoing for an unknown period of time. After all, doesn't it get chilly sometimes for skeletons too? Yeah, I... Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big Man, shout out to y'all with the fan art, bro. That was crazy. That was a crazy story. Shout out to Rubber. This was wild. This was definitely a wild one, bro. He hanging up the people like they're literally clothes, bro. That's fucking whack, dog. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, bro. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what y'all thought of this as well. I'm going to see y'all niggas in the next one, bro. Peace.